So my name is Glenda Clare, Dr. Glenda Clare, and I am here today to talk about providing services and outreach in the digital age. What I think that I'm going to start out with after I ask y'all a couple of questions, because I need to always know who is in the room with me. I think I'm going to give a short recap of some of what I shared in the uh, pre-conference yesterday, and then I'm going to move forward. So here's what I'm going to ask you all to do as part of what I call a waterfall chat, okay? So you have to listen to my instructions, and this is something that you can do. So my question to you is, what is your role? Are you a family peer support person? Are you an agency administrator? Are you some kind of licensed mental health professional? Are you a consultant? Now you are not supposed to do anything except write that, whatever you are in the chat. You are not to press enter until I tell you to press enter, okay? And this is called a waterfall chat. So has everybody typed in the yeah. answer in terms of what is your role? Go ahead and type in your role and then press enter. Okay, so far everybody I see is the family peer support. I don't know what CP, CPC is. A grant writer, we've got a youth lead a youth facilitator, okay. I am an intern. I specialize in connecting families through social media. Okay, we got an expert here, y'all. <laughs> we got an expert. Oh, no, she's shaking her head. She's not an expert. Okay, so it looks like for the most part, everybody here is um, a peer, peer support provider. Now, here's a question that I have. Um, they had a PowerPoint for me. Um, Leanne, um, was I supposed to upload my own PowerPoint? Um, I think so. I wasn't oh, told. It's okay. It's all right. I, wait a minute. I was a Girl Scout. I can figure that. Just a second. Not a problem. Now we don't. We're not harsh judges here, right, everybody? Okay. See, can y'all see my PowerPoint now? Yes. Okay. See, I told y'all I was Girl Scout, so I can figure that out. Yeah, it looks great. Okay, so we are not where we're supposed to be, but okay, so during this workshop, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to be talking about the need for digital outreach and internet-based services. I'm going to talk about the characteristics of the families you serve, talk about social media platforms, video conferencing software, strategies to digitally connect and create online services. And then there'll be some small group work. But what you should know is there's gonna be small group work throughout this workshop, okay? So that was my agenda. I'm gonna remove from, um, yeah, I'm going to um, remove this right now so I can talk to you. So I'm gonna be going back and forth in terms of doing this. I'm gonna tell you quickly about some of what I shared on Wednesday, because today's Friday, what I talked about Wednesday on the pre-conference um, session, yes. Okay, so I talked about two things in terms of this whole thing, in terms of digital outreach and internet-based services. I talked about first, the importance of incorporating best practice. And so there were a couple of best practices that I wanted to talk about. The first thing is that you need to get your clients to know that you know what, we're dealing with a whole new world now. You need to find out where they are with that, how they feel about that, and you need to work with them to make adjustments. So when I talk about working to make adjustments, one of the things that I want you to know is that it's all on you. How many of you know, because I can see you all on my screen right now, how many of you know 
that the attitude you bring into the room is the attitude that a lot of times your clients will transfer and they will then have that attitude you got. How many of you know that? So it's all about attitude. So if you come in negative, ooh, no, I don't really like, yeah, we don't really want to use that social media and stuff. Mm -mm, we, we don't want to do those online sessions. What's going to come back to you? No, I don't really want to go to those. No, I don't really like those. Come in talking about this is an opportunity. Why is it an opportunity? It's an opportunity because you don't have to leave your house or wherever you are. Mariah's getting ready to go pick up her children. Guess what? She can take this social media stuff with her. She can talk to us and still be with us in session. Now, here's the thing that I want you to know. Give your clients, I know it's the uh, mental health, licensed mental health professional in me that says clients. I know y'all don't like that language. Families and individuals is what I need to use. It's bad me. But <laughs> here's the thing. We need to, I lost my train of thought. We need to let our clients, let our families and individuals know that this is an opportunity. And this can be a very good opportunity if we make it that way. It's an opportunity so that they have access. If they don't know how to do something, we need to tell them that's okay. We can teach you how to use social media. So. I'm going to show you a couple of different things right now because the second point that I made the other day was that you need to identify what kind of um, media you need to use. Um, once you identify it, you need to learn how to use it and use it effectively. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things because typically, I don't know if I've been doing it as well as I want to do it, um, but I have this gadget. Has anybody seen this gadget before? I bought it from Walmart. And what I do is I put it over the area for uh, the camera on my computer. And so y'all think I'm looking at you because I'm looking in this space. And what do we know? We know that people like to feel that people are paying attention to them. They want to feel engaged. And so I use that. Now, look at all of this stuff I got in the background here. Some of y'all are probably looking and saying, what she got that day? I want to know. Is that a bit of a distraction? It could be. And so I could use my handy dandy screen. So, oh my goodness, you can see that side. Let me move this part up so you can't. Oh, she can see that side too. Okay, let me move it up. You need to move things so that it is less distracting. Now, that, that, that chroma key green might be a little distracting. You can uh, go to Joann's or somewhere, get a piece of cloth, put it over it. Or you can do what I sometimes do. I didn't want to do that to y'all today. But Amazon has some nice little backgrounds that you can put on. $14 or so. Or you could do, let me show you. I'm going to show you my screen. Can y'all scooch? Wrong thing. Can y'all see my screen? Yes. Yeah, but I can't see it. We see so, the agenda. Maybe my things went to the top of the screen. So let me tell you, you should be able to look at the bottom of your screen. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, you see um, a microphone where you can go mute, right? Can everybody see that? Okay. Next to it, you see something that says stop video. Click on that. And when you click on that, you'll see that you can choose background. So I've got this background. I've got that beautiful picture of me. I've got my alma mater. You can upload pictures that you want back there. Now, right now, this seems to be okay, but do you see how sometimes it goes kind of fuzzy? 
So it looks like my hand is doing interesting things. That is why I prefer the vinyl background <coughs> or something like this, because otherwise it looks like you are hovering into the who knows where. And uh, that's a little irritating in terms of looking at um, the screen. So um, I'm talking about um, knowing Sorry, I'm talking about um, creating your atmosphere. I generally use in front of me, I use a light. You can, and I also have a light coming over here to the side because I'm dark skinned. So I need to lighten up my face so that y'all can see me. However, one of the things I discovered is if I turn the light this way, I look like I put Vaseline on my face. So you need to pay attention to how you present because that's going to impact, you know, what your clients are thinking, what your individuals and families are thinking as you're engaging. Teach them what you need for them to do so that they can engage, be engaging to you as well. So sometimes I can be really close to the camera or I can be further away. I don't have the room in this particular space, but you might want to ask your individuals and families to move the cameras further away from them so that you can see if there's some body language that you need to know about. I'm trying to give you uh, the refresher from the other day. I'm not being as engaging as I was the other day because I've got all of this stuff. However, animation is important. People need to know that you're interesting. They don't wanna have you talk in a monotone. They don't want to have you talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, never get them involved. They need for you to have some kind of engagement. And so at this point in time, I'm going to engage y'all with my next activity, which is again, in the chat, I'm going to ask you to let me know on a scale from one to five, what is your comfort level in terms of using digital devices for communicating with your individuals and families. So what is your what is your level of engagement? So one is low and five is high. Looks like I've got a lot of threes, a couple of fours and fives. Okay, I think I'm kind of there in the middle. So nobody is low. Everybody is pretty high. That's great to know. Key thing that I need to find out, and I'm getting ready to put you all in groups in just a second. I'm getting ready to put y'all in groups in just a second, because what I want you to start thinking about are the characteristics of your families. So someone had asked a question in the question and answer portion of the, the workshop um, description earlier today. And it pretty much goes along with what I was intending to do. But they were asking about how do you engage individuals and families? One of the things that I believe is that part of engagement is knowing who your individuals and families are. So I'm going to ask you all, as you go into breakout rooms, I'm going to ask you to give me 10 characteristics of the individuals and families that you serve. So what am I talking about when I say 10 characteristics? I want to know who is that perfect individual that you're serving? What's their age range? What is their race, ethnicity? Where do they live? What kinds of things do they like? What do you think is a place that they would go in terms of using social media? Where are their friends? Where do they like to spend their time? What kinds of things do they enjoy? So there are 33 people here. I am going to create
six breakout rooms and you all are going to tell me the characteristics of the people that um, you serve. And so you're gonna go ahead and, and press join. Miss Melendez, are you in a group? Annoying the group. Let's see how we can go in. I can hear you.
Okay, I'm bringing everybody back. Everybody should be back. Okay, so transparency is key. And part of my transparency is that apparently I didn't give y'all good instructions because when I came and visited y'all in the group, y'all were talking about other stuff and that those 10 characteristics. Not so, us, not group two. Yeah, there's some of y'all were doing some interesting things in there. So you weren't talking about the 10 characteristics. The 10 characteristics are key. My business coach would make it a big, it would make it a longer list. She would make it 21 characteristics. And those characteristics are important because they will determine how you do outreach on social media. They will determine what social media outlets you use. So you need to know what those are. So what are some of the characteristics that you all came up with? Don't everybody talk at one time? So in our group, I'll, I'll, and we'll kind of do a team effort. Some of the ones that I wrote down, uh, busy, distracted, and we talked about kind of the lack of knowledge um, with how to use the different systems. Now, if that was on the you know. But now that wasn't what I expected. So when you're saying, hmm, so here's what I'm talking about. So again, it sounds like my instructions were not clear. And so I need to be more clear. So when we look at different social media platforms, they're geared towards different populations. Pretty much everybody uses Facebook. Then you've got other people that are using Instagram. You've got other people that are using LinkedIn. You've got other people that are using Pinterest. So if I was to say, what kind of platform is Instagram? And Instagram is number four in terms of the most popular um, social media sites. What would you say is definitive about Instagram? It's, it's photo based. It's <laughs> photo based. It's photo based, it's video based. So whatever you're going to do to engage your population on that, you're gonna need to have great photos and great video. What would you say about Facebook? How is that based? What do you think people are looking for that are on there? Interesting conversation. Share their Interesting conversation. Somebody said, somebody said, Elsa, what, what, Carol? Oh, just an opportunity to share their opinions and converse uh, with everybody all at okay. once. Okay if they're willing to speak, because sometimes people aren't, they just kind of click like to other people's stuff. Okay, what about TikTok? What's definitive about TikTok? Video. Video, okay. Entertainment. So, say that again? Trends. Entertainment. Like all trends. trends, entertainment, okay. What about Pinterest? Pinterest. Mm -hmm. Say if I want again. to know how to make something, I go on Pinterest. Um, if you I want to know how to make something. If, okay. Inspiration. Inspirational kinds of things, right. Creativity. Oh, creativity. Creativity. So what does that mean in terms of who you're trying to engage? So if you are, um, if you've got a, the person that you're trying to engage is a millennial. Which one of those social media are they most likely to be interested in? TikTok. Instagram. Instagram. TikTok and Instagram. As a millennial, I'll say Instagram and Facebook, actually. <laughs> okay. So maybe those three, but they're probably not going to be on LinkedIn, right? 
You also know that based on those things, based on just what you all said, that they're going to want for you to create something that's going to engage them, a nice engaging picture, um, a video clip that you could provide, maybe a video clip about who your staff members are, maybe a video clip in terms of here are some of the resources in our communities that they might want to use. All of those things are things that you're going to need to consider. But if you don't know who your clients are, if you don't know who they are, if you don't know what they like, are you going to engage them? No. Probably not. So you need to start thinking about who are my people. Now, I don't know. Do you all, peop do you all see your individuals and families just as single units or do you have groups of more than three or some combination of the two. Depending on which role I am, this is Kimberly. Um, I do family support, so that's individual. And then um, I do substance abuse, so that's group. Okay, okay, okay. Other people. Uh, this is Mariah. It's always individual for me. I just see the family units, but never as a group. Okay, okay. How do people find out about your services? Referrals online. Magdalena, I saw that smile on your face. You were like, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. how do Social they media, find out about us? Social media is definitely is very important. So we use uh, Twitter, we have Instagram, we have um, Lexi, you're on my team as well, and you're always welcome to jump in. So when, when we connect with we have weekly support groups. We use Zoom. And when we connect with an individual uh, family, we use uh, the platform of Teams um, or Zoom. So, Lexi? Yeah, you said that perfectly. Our individual group work takes place over Teams. And then I work specifically with youth. So we, were, we are all over social media platforms with a specific focus on Instagram, getting to the point of getting approval for TikTok, but hopefully we'll, we'll engage there soon. Okay, now here's a question that I, I have for you all. Um, and then we're gonna come to you, Ms. Melendez. We're gonna come okay. back to you. So a question that I have for, that was Lexi and Magdalena were just speaking. I can tell because y'all are side by side on my screen. But anyway, so you mentioned MS Teams for individuals and then Zoom for group. Is the MS Teams protected so that you are not breaching confidentiality. So that is why you are using that particular software as opposed to the Zoom, which costs a whole lot of money for it to be encrypted. Yeah, and the accessibility of the platforms and then the functionalities with Zoom, you know, you're able to do polls. We have the ability to record over Zoom on Teams. We don't have those features and, and abilities. True. Well, That's good to hear. You were going to say something, Magdalena, and then Miss Melendez is going to speak because I don't know what that M stands for. <laughs> for okay. Me? Okay. Who could talk me? Okay. For me, I use the Zoom and Teams for the group I have. It. You know, it's more confidential when the family, everything off top. And I use a lot of time for my family. When we see my son in Germany, or see my daughter in South Carolina, something like this. Not for everybody, you know. Not because for you everybody. Have, not for everybody. You have to be, be care, very careful. So Facebook is nice, but if something he bring a lot of stuff. It's not good for you too. You well, know, now you to in terms of you using those. It. In terms of using those social media sites, Same. you do need to be careful because I you do. don't need to have any private conversations exactly. on those social media sites. Exactly. Even in the messenger, even in the messenger, that information mm -hmm. is kept and it is stored and we don't know what Facebook is doing with it. So yeah. that is not a confidential place to be. It is a good place to be in terms of sharing that I work for uh, a particular agency. These are the kinds of services that we provide. 
having an expert speaker. You can have an expert speaker come on to do a Facebook Live, something along those lines, but nothing, nothing, nothing confidential. Um, MS Teams, now I, I, I will admit, I'm a licensed clinician, so I have to even be careful with MS Teams and Zoom. I can't use either one of those. I use a private encrypted that I pay a whole lot of money for to do um, clinical stuff because I definitely can't get any information of, about my clients out and into the world. And I'm very protective of that, even in terms of emails. I, mm -hmm. I don't use any of that because I need to be really careful about that. But these are some things that you need to take into consideration as you're doing your work. Now, somebody else had a comment that they were going to make. Was that you, Andy? Okay, okay. So let me move forward. I have gotten a little bit off track, I will admit to you, in that I really wasn't prepared to have to go back and forth with my slides. I thought that that was going to be part of the setup. And so I am a little distracted. And I do think letting your clients know, not clients, individuals and families know that sometimes things do happen. Sometimes distractions do happen. Sometimes things just don't go the way that you expect it. So my PowerPoint is somewhere else. And all I've got are my notes and I'm gonna leave those there. What I had wanted you to do next was I wanted to talk about strategies to use when you are working with individuals and families. And so I'm gonna keep us there as opposed to where I was gonna go related to video conferencing based on what people have said. And I see some stuff going on in the chat. So I wanna check that very quickly. Okay. One of the things that I know in terms of using this whole format that we're using for this new digital age that we're finding is that it is really important to use all of the features that are, in this instance, I'm gonna focus on Zoom because that's what we're using. It's important for you to know what's here. So, Let's look at some of the things that we can do. One of the things that we know is that we can put people into small breakout rooms. Y'all have seen me do that. We also know that we can use some of the devices here. So I want everyone to go to the top of their screen and I want them to use this whiteboard. And I want you to write on this whiteboard your favorite inspirational word. Does everyone know how to get there to the whiteboard? Okay, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna tell you how. So if you go to the top of your screen. Actually, do you see at the bottom of your screen going onto the right-hand side, uh, three dots that say more? You don't see that. No, it doesn't say anything no. like that. Because we're not hosts. It'll only pop up if we're hosts. So you only see it. <clears throat> Did we just put our word in the chat for you? I, I have it. No, I, I, I want you to use this. So I see. you don't see at the top of the screen something that says basic advanced in files? No. Okay, let's try this. Do you see at the top of the screen now anything that, that allows you to see it? No. Give me a second. Everybody should be able to use this. That's why I'm frustrated. 
Um, generally, I should be able to. Could it because could it be? because some of us are in like WOVA using it through there and some of us are using it directly through Zoom. Oh. Maybe you have to share the screen, I don't know. So here's what typically happens. Typically, if I'm on Zoom and I'm not using WOVA because WOVA is a video conferencing, a video conference device. Usually when I am just using Zoom all by itself, it provides a feature at the top of the screen that allows me to put stamps. So do you see me putting hearts? Do you see me putting stars? Yes. Know? It's nice. Do you see me having arrows? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So that is a feature on Zoom. I don't know what's happening with Wove right now. But um, that typically is there. I can usually ask somebody to write in their inspirational thing. So I can use the word. This is my favorite. And I can have my client, I can have my individuals and families also write that. I can go in. Hey, Glenda. This is this yes. is Kimberly. And one of the groups that I was in yesterday, they had us add something, but they asked us to go to menti.com and it just showed up whatever we put words on. Well, nope. menti.com should have you doing something completely different. But it was very similar, like a whiteboard. I had never used that before but it was very similar to what you're requesting. Okay, well, I can take us to menti.com because I've it was also- like each, used... each individual went to went So to everybody go to menti.com. We can use menti.com and menti.com also makes uh, work clouds. But you should be able to do this on Zoom. Well, Glenda, you have plenty of time, so don't worry about that. Well, I am worried about it because the computer is not doing what it's supposed to do. But do you okay. need me to, if you need me to try and get bring someone in to help you, I'd be glad to do that. So here's what's happening, Leanne. I use Zoom every single day. Wait a minute now, somebody is writing on Zoom. Who's, who's doing that writing? Somebody's what? Somebody is writing on Zoom. I didn't write that. I can do. Who's writing? I can do. I have no. Unmute yourself. How do we get? Y'all don't. Y'all don't see. I can do. I see it, but it was not I see me. It. it was me doing it. If you go, I was playing around with it, but I couldn't talk while I was. It wouldn't let okay, me. Okay, Sharita. What did your name is Sharita? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what do you, what are you seeing that everybody else is not seeing? It's going to be at the very bottom. Is if they're on Zoom, it says share screen. Share screen, yeah. And you hit that, and then you should see the whiteboard. Can everybody try that? Can I so um over the other participation? Who's saying that? You just put hi. So the person that's sharing their screen is the only one that can enter notes on the whiteboard. Yeah. So this still is not the way that this is supposed to function because I have done this many times with a group of people where everybody on the page can 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 write in. So I don't know if this is different because we are using Hova. Maybe. Or is everybody considered a host? Um, Leanne, is everybody considered a host? Because it is interesting that they... No, 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 no. But I just clicked on uh, share screen. It says you cannot share screen while the other participant is sharing. Please say that. 
That's what I've I got. Also used, I've also used the whiteboard for stuff before and it worked. So I don't, I'm not sure why this isn't. Yeah, this, 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 this is, um, this is unsettling. <laughs> uh, I'll, you know what? I can try and get somebody to pop in. Well, um, no, let's, let's move on. So, okay, we can use the whiteboard. If you're just using Zoom, don't have Hova on it. Just use Zoom. And um, if you share your screen, you can tell, generally you can tell the individuals in your families, there will usually be a bar at the top of the screen that they will need to um, click on, which will, it says annotate. And they will usually be able to go into that whiteboard and write whatever it is that you all are discussing. But another feature that I like is using, um, using Zoom to do other things. So for instance, consider the fact that you might be um, needing to refer your family to someone else. What I was always taught in terms of referral is that I needed to do a warm handoff. And a warm handoff means that I need to actually connect my family with whomever it is that I want to connect them with. And so you can use Zoom to be able to do that. You have that person come on, you have them introduce um, themselves right there. You have them have some short discussion about you know, what, what you know, needs to happen so that your, your family is not repeating their story over and over and over again. You can even show them how to get there. You can do, um, the map quest and take them, you know, there. If they're taking a bus, you can tell them um, what the bus, bus route is. You can go ahead and get that information, right, while you're using Zoom. One of my favorites is videos. So wait a minute, who, who just wrote that? Leanne. We use Zoom to do, here's the thing um, I want to say, don't worry about using the chat come on with your mic. So, um, Rihanna, I just yes, messed up your name. Go ahead and share what you just wrote in the chat. Uh, we use Zoom to do various activities. Some of our most popular ones have been craft nights, ball nights, and common water bottle activities. And so we have people register and it stops a week before and then we'll mail out all the supplies to them and we'll email them the Zoom link and we'll all get on. And we have had um, families meet with other families that are dealing with the same um, mental health issues or child behavioral issues. And they have been able to help each other after the meeting. And we've also been able to reach it to more people because people are like, hey, this is free and a fun activity to do with your kids. Yes. You're going to have to go back and tell us about this crafts and the spa nights and what is a calm water bottle activity? What, what are those? So the crafts that we do, um, we do them with other partner, other of our partners. So the most recent one was in October and it was with the uh, Oklahoma School of Death. And so we did pumpkins, made little pumpkins and they taught um, American Sign Language while you made your little pumpkins. Um, spa nights, we try to do one every six spots for moms. And so we have a local um, lady that makes bath bombs and bath salts and we'll get together a gift package, mail it out to the moms. We all come together. We all just chat, mom talk. It doesn't have to be mom talk, whatever you want to talk about. That's what we do. And we focus on um, self-care. And then the calming water bottles are used for children that have um, mental health issues, that have problems regulating, calming, anxiety. I use them at work. Whenever I get bored, I like flip one over. So you put like jewels, diamonds, <laughs> all kinds of stuff in it and you flip it over and they all go to the bottom and you flip we them back that, we, go, we call those sensory bottles. Yes, that's, uh, yes. Okay. You know, when you were talking, I was also thinking about some other things that I have done in terms of fundraising. I don't know if y'all need funds. Y'all might not eat, need any. I got involved in terms of bingo nights using Zoom. 
And we use that as a fundraiser for our organization and raise lots of money that way. But there's other kinds of activities like this. I'm, I'm sure these activities that you were just um, talking about could also be used for fundraisers. How else can we use this? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, this is uh, not my best workshop. So I'm going to tell y'all that I am a little disoriented with the things that have happened here. So I apologize for that. I don't know what else to say about that. <laughs> I am not doing well here. Um, there are other kinds of things though that I do want you to consider in terms of using these resources. How many of you have people that come in that do some expert, um, you have experts from the community that come in and talk to your folks? Do any of you do that? Yes. Me. So what kind of people have you had coming to your workshops? For me, coming um the Latin community in San Wax in Detroit. And um, I have a group two times in the month. So of doing different workshops, coming the sometimes he comes the therapies, he doing a uh, yoga. You know, for all of them, for the mother, and he can learn. You know? So they can, and they can do it so that the people that are there watching can get involved. Yes, yes. yes. And he, yes. And he practiced and everything. Sometimes I'm doing co uh, college, you know, everybody take a magazine, doing something like remember the culture where he coming from, start doing with glue, you know, sometimes after that, the people start explain this one, I think song is my how, the flower my mother put the put different, you know, and a so picture different that, crafts. See, it's so nice because the people who can talk. Yes. The people, the people is one sir care for the mother. Sometimes he come in the young girls when the mother is something nice. Well, you know, another thing that this can be useful for is having your translators, because yeah. your translators can be in the crack in, in the uh, chat area, or your translators can be um, doing closed caption on your um, on for your us, machine. For us, all of them is Latin woman. You don't know all of English. So everybody all in your community is Latin. Okay. Yeah, sometimes, okay. you know, English, you know, I speak more English, but uh, almost it's for a Spanish support uh, partners. It's for parent a Spanish support group. Okay. You know, because sometimes okay. you don't know what he do, where he go. So I have a lot of clients. Sometimes before I have almost 100 people. So every two weeks. Well, you don't have to worry about not having enough space. When you're using the computer, no before right? before and then other sites and work little mm -hmm. by little you know it depends the group the people I can have a lot of people in one space so coming almost 20 21 something mm -hmm. 50 you know it depends the day she when I come in but I have a different group for almost 12 years so what um, is the most challenging thing that you all have found in terms of using this internet-based kind of a service? What's the most challenging thing about it? For more challenging and can um, give you the information on the family. So uh, giving, what do you mean by giving the information to the family? Information, because sometimes he come in here, the health department, the Detroit, like now, like the COVID-19 coming to us to talking in for Zoom, for Zoom doctor, the everything hospital, Latin doctor, you know, explain to the mother and uh, the IEP people, mm -hmm. you know, IEP for the plan, a special education plan for explaining what the mother he can do when he don't have the service. It's different kind of stuff. 
So what I hear you saying, Ms. Melendez, is that this is a great opportunity for those individuals and families that you have that are having common challenges. Common that you challenges. can have somebody come. Yes. Actually, we, we recently did that with our Department of Child Welfare. There were a number of people that had a number of similar challenges. And what we did is we used Zoom. We had a lunch and learn. And then we um, did something extra. We had a list of the names of the people that were going to come to the lunch and learn. And we actually sent them lunch. So we all sent everybody a pizza. They loved that. They yes. got their questions answered. And then we, we, we um, actually fed them at the same time. What other challenges do other people have? So Carolyn, what kind of challenges are you having using um, the internet? Carolyn, your face disappeared. Did you leave me? Pardon? Oh, there you are. You moved on my screen. I was, you were over here, now you're over here. So what are some of the common challenges that you are having in terms of using digital oh. communication? Um, actually, I'm using, uh, you know, Zoom um, in our agency pretty successfully, not as much as I would like to. Um, I'm a family partner with the adults. So it's been very helpful for us. Um, I, I do, um, our clinicians have a problem um, sometimes when some of our kids are on, um, you know, COVID quarantine and can't be seen in person. The little kids do not like to be on Zoom generally. Um, the little but, kids don't like to be on Zoom? Oh gosh, no, no. They're just too wiggly. It's, it's not a good way to engage little kids. But um, with parents, um, I really like, being able to offer, you know, that option when parents cannot leave their kids alone in the house for, you know, for safety reasons, or if a parent doesn't drive, if, you know, if everybody's quarantined because of a COVID exposure, it's been a really great um, option for, you know, for us. Um, some of the problems are, um, especially like, well, we do some groups, and if we have a group going on, um, just the same a communication problem that I think everybody has that, um, you know, being heard, um, knowing when to interject and um, is everybody on, um, you know, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, you know, now you sound like a robot, you know, or you, you're frozen and, you know, oh my gosh, is my face frozen in a weird, you know, like way <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's looking I, at me. <laughs> I, I can relate to that. That yeah. frozen thing, there's nothing that you can do about it, right? There's, um, our agency uses, um, well, we use Zoom in between, um, um, you know, uh, well, we do have a program, so it is encrypted, and we do pay all that money for it, but um, because our people are all over the place, over three counties, it's been a great way for um, our team to stay together. Like, when we're all driving along, you know, we can listen and um, still be together as a team from home from our cars or from, you know, the parking lot and it saves us from, you know, having to, a lot of times, you know, having to meet, you know, in person when sometimes we can't. Um, some of the good things that we've done is uh, like uh, Melen Ms. Melendez is um, using Zoom for, you know, these groups to pull from our different, um, you know, the different uh, departments of our agency because we have a group home, we've got a community action team, we've got, um, um, you know, just a couple of different programs. But when we start hearing that, you know, oh, we've got a couple of different, more than a couple of different families who have this special, um, you know, need or commonality, like, um, so for instance, we had uh, quite a few kids who were, who were coming in through our programs who had recently identified um, to their families as being, you know, LGBTQ. And, you know, this was like new to the family and they've got kids with, first of all, you know, very significant behavioral health issues and who've been, you know, hospitalized. Oh, and surprise, your kid's also identifying as LGBTQ. You know, we didn't know this. So um, we invited these families, you know, to all come together 
we know this is all new for you, but um, it wasn't so much of an education program. It was just an opportunity to meet with the staff and to ask questions. So what we've been doing is flipping these, um, you know, our little special groups instead of, you know, talking at them for 45 minutes and then giving them, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for questions. We're like, you know, talking to them for 10 minutes, introducing ourselves, you know, and like, you guys are the experts, you have the questions, go, you know, and. Um, you know, so, so having like, shorter yeah. sessions. Yeah, shorter sessions. We talk less and we listen more and we answer a lot more questions. And then at the end, um, everybody gets emailed um, a resource list for local and national resources where then they can, you know, take, um, you know, explore their own resources and learn more. So we're, we've just been treating it as a, uh, like a little jumping off point, a launch pad. Uh, that sounds patients. like a wonderful resource though that you have. So yeah. you're using the shorter sessions, mm -hmm. you're answering all of their questions, you're hearing what they have to say, and then you're sending them a goodie. Yeah. Goodie, yes. Yeah, yeah you're sending them a goodie. Now there's a question that, de that, that Danielle um, mentioned, and I think we should address that. She's got it in the chat. And she's saying that there are some services and information that are better shared in person. And you know, there's nothing like that in-person thing. However, I do think that we need to be socially distanced, but we can definitely do that, you know? Because um, there are some things that you do need to kind of, Put your eyeballs on people you know oh, i'm looking yeah. at everybody here right now and i'm looking and i can't see anything below the waist and you know people can be all balled up with you know their legs all crossed up and what have you and you are missing all of that communication because yeah. you're not there so there are some things that that you can that you know that you need to do with a person in person what are the signals that you're going to get that are going to tell you that, yeah, I need to go pay a personal visit? Um, are you asking the some group things with their face? Some, some not communicating with you? For me, every single woman here wants to see me in person. She lovely. Everybody, woman. everybody wants to see you in person. Yeah, yeah. Everybody say, Marisa, what is the date we can do a lot of activity like the tea day for the tea? Everybody coming with different clothes, the hat, when the cup more preference, you know, somebody give it to you. You talking about that? Um, it's it's lot of lot of lot of event. Now of have it for the Thanksgiving Day, Thanksgiving Day, for giving everything to the kid, the mother, the DJ. You know, everybody, you know, when everything the, the city say to us, recreation, uh, everybody wanna sit together because of need that. Of need yeah. that. Yeah. You know, it's something like you say, oh my God, I'm working when almost two years. In computer, hi, how you doing? You know, the people he love you, or you know, share with you. Hi, Marisa, how you doing? I want to see you take a hold, you know. But but we um, need to take good care of ourselves. Oh, yeah. And we oh, know yeah. that this virus is real. Oh, so yeah. We need to take care of that. Danielle, oh, yeah. you got your hand up. So I take the mic, please. Right. Oh, Danielle is my baby girl too. <laughs> <laughs> and we're, so yes, we 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 work together. <laughs> and Mariah, um, I'm sorry I can't be on camera. I'm usually not like this, but again, I told you I'm handling the situation. That and it's so funny. This topic is what it is, um, right now. But the other part to that, I think, and I think this is what Marissa was getting at, is the uh, um. I, you know, I definitely don't want to be a Debbie Downer or a negative Nancy or anything, but I do like to play devil's advocate because it's pros and cons to um, being able to meet virtually um, and being able to meet face to face. And um, sometimes communication breakdown, kind of what you were just saying about like body language uh, cues that you missed that you're not picking up on because you can't see the full person 
Um, in my case, you can't see my face, so you don't know what I look like, you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, when people don't want to have a camera on, and then things that you you can't make them do certain things. For example, in, um, you know, a lot of service provision, you are supposed to uh, scan the, the, the room, basically, to make sure that, it, you know, it's safe, that the information is confidential. You can't always make sure that it's confidential. I, um, it, it, it only goes so far. You know, you can't make the, the, the client scan the room if they just ain't trying to scan the room, you know? <laughs> um, I, the other challenges that I run into is, is um, a lot of people don't want to, to meet on Zoom. You know, we already have, we talked about connectivity issues, but um, for example, I was just talking about this with uh, someone at my job. Um, parents, in my case, I'm a parent support partner. Um, they know that we have a meeting. I let them schedule their own meetings with me. And then they forget about it. And they are out in the world doing whatever at Whole Foods, picking up sushi and all this other stuff. And you can't really attend to, you know, you can't really offer the support that you're supposed to be able to offer that support in that time that's designated for them because they out here doing whatever, 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 you know. Well, but I got a question for you here. Uh -huh. At what point are they accountable for some things? Absolutely. Now you are supposed to do and you are offering your services, but you can't, you can't make a horse drink. Exactly. So for, I will, I will tell you that it depends. It also depends on the level of supervision that you get as well, because <clears throat> I think I, this is just my honest, honest opinion. I think that it depends on, it's supposed to be a professionalism in the supervision that you receive, but also the, the person that's, that's handed down supervision is a person with a personality. So they feel, they may feel that certain things are okay, whereas it's not okay, it's not good service provision, they may feel like, okay, well, can we make an exception or it's not that big of a deal and you like, well, you ain't the one providing service, so it is that big of a deal, but then it's that whole, it's the, the ego tripping. I, I don't want you stepping on so, my- you So can't. let's throw that out to the group. Let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's throw this out to the entire group. Mm -hmm. When is it appropriate to say, I need to see that person in person. Carolyn. I think this is Magdalena. Up. This is Magdalena. Well, Magdalena, okay, let's let, because Magdalena hasn't said anything yet. So Magdalena, you go first and then we'll follow that up with Carolyn. Um, I forgot my turn. Okay, so I was gonna say that it depends on the individual situation right, of the family, of the family's needs. I have come across where families, um, they're not too tech savvy or that we have tried using a platform and it's complicated for them. Like mom doesn't have an email. So um, they don't, it, it's going to be hard to communicate, to share documents or, you know, to kind of do that more individual thing since, you know, we're trying to stay, uh, you know, safe and healthy due to this coronavirus thing. Um, so um, like text messaging, she can only receive some text messages, uh, some information on there. Um, so it like really depends on the situation. Um, so over, now over there's time. one thing I want to say about one thing that you said. So I think we should all come with the expectation <clears throat> that our families don't know how to use this technology. And so we do need to go to them and teach them how to use this. Now yes. that email thing, they may need email for some other parts of their lives. And so yahoo.com, gmail.com, I think we should set all of our people up with that. They don't have to use it. Now see, they could be difficult like me and say, yeah, well, yeah, you gave that to me, but I'm not going to use it. So I hear you loud and clear with that, Magdalene. I hear you loud and clear with that. That all makes sense. And there are times when you're going to have to. However, you're going to also need to keep yourself safe. I'm real. In, I, my background is public health. 
I'm like, mm, I'm not dying for nobody. I have yes. had some friends that have yes. died from this disease. So yes. your your well being is number one. You're and and I just wanted to say that you weren't finished. So go ahead and finish. No, no, that's fine. I was just I was finished. I was just saying that it it depends on the in the in the family's individual situation. I had a a, a parent uh what asked me. She was going into the school for her daughter's manifestation and you know manifestations are so crucial like IEPs and everything and it's like I wish I could go there per in person but I said I asked the team can you send me a google meet link um you know we have to be present so we figured it out um but in situations like that I wish I could be present to be able to support her more individual there and seal the paperwork and everything because it just makes it so difficult with schools at times yeah so, yeah that was just yeah my and 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 that's real because if she's going through something with the school sometimes you do need another body that you can look at that knows what you're feeling or you know, you can pinch them or something, you know, to, to yeah, I, I feel you with that. Carolyn, well, you're going to say something. Um, no, I apologize. Um, looks like I've had my reaction hand up the whole time, but it's not showing up on my thumbnail. I didn't realize I had, <laughs> I had my hand up the whole time. But, um, but I am happy to share, um, you know, just like Magdalena, we do, uh, our agency does use uh, Zoom, um, Microsoft Teams with our school, our school district where I am uses MS Teams. And um, it's, you know, just depending, you know, school to school, some of them will meet in person, some of them are meeting by Teams. And um, I agree, we are in, we are out in the community, we're in the homes, our clients are in the office um, when, when they can be, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they can't because of illness or because a parent has other children in the home and can't arrange transportation, we will go to the homes. But uh, we do use, uh, you know, the online platforms as, as an adjunct and uh, when it's appropriate, you know, if a family is clearly not um, tech savvy, if they're having a hard problem, of course, we're going to go into the home. Uh, we do teach people how to use it. Um, Sometimes we meet on MS Teams with schools for IEPs or manifestations or school meetings. Um, next week, I've got a meeting with a parent. Um, it, it's, it's a school meeting uh, over MS Teams, but I'm bringing her into the office so I can be there as a physical presence you know, for her. And we will meet together with the rest of the school on MS Teams. So we are doing our best to... Well, but I, I like that together. also, Carolyn, yeah. because you're saying... Okay, the school is having this meeting. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have your client there isolated. You're going to have her in the office with you in close proximity to be supportive. So you don't necessarily have to go to that, that person's house. You could have them come to where you are. It depends on the on on the family's preference. You know, sometimes we will, I would do the same thing at the house. This parent prefers to come into the office. So, um, but, yeah, I was also thinking when you were saying that, so if the family doesn't have the resources for MS teams, mm -hmm. you do. Yeah, 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 we do. And, um, and again, some, some families don't want us, you know, in the home because maybe it's chaotic or they think it's too messy or there's not privacy. So, you know, we're just you know, the, um, the Zoom and the Teams, it's just another tool for us, but it's, it's not something tool. that, but it's not something that we're going to, you know, like rely on a lot. It's just another really great tool. Uh, I think so, and this one, COVID changed everything. They all I think things have changed for everything. I think they have changed everything. forever. Yeah, forever. So for me, uh, I'm, the family wanted me Call to you know telehealth, he feel better because sometimes the mommy had to go pick it up at uh, one kid in one school, other than another school, not have a chance to sit down with me. But I'm preferring like this because I have to take care of myself, right? I have my husband, he have a cancer, so I have to take care of him, you know, up here 
it's only three people in the office. Everybody have a mask, everybody preparation. So the people preferring in, in, in college, I'm calling, okay. That's it, I have to take care of myself, come, like you said, because I have a lot of IEP, but in the Zoom, in Zoom. And I'm talking to the principal, she showed me everything paper, the padding is in the in the house. You know, you have to look in for, for you take care of yourself. Yes. Taking because care they of yourself not, is they, primary. They, they, they just not pay you life, right? So Kimberly sure. and Sharita, what are y'all thinking about all of this that we're discussing? What's coming into your minds? Well, for me, I'm sorry, I can't put my camera on. I had an allergic reaction to something and my face is a little swollen. So I don't want to. I understand that too. <laughs> I've um, been there. <laughs> <laughs> so just for, you know, from my experiences of working with uh, families, you know, trying to get everybody on, even myself on board to even try to use Zoom and Teams and all some of the other resources that's out here. Um, some families just may not have the internet because I live in a rural area. And of course, we don't have internet. Sometimes it may not pick up at their homes. So, or the cell phones may not pick up. So it's, it's been challenging. And then like, as far as with the age of the child that I've worked with, like I have a seven-year-old and the mom said he has ADHD. He has some other uh, diagnos diagnosis as well. So it's going to be kind of hard to sit and do a Zoom call or, you know, like any kind of telehealth services with him because of his behavior. Because of that behavior, yeah. Yes. So I have experienced that. And then I have also experienced just having one that's not engaging in it at all. He may do better face-to-face -face versus being over a Zoom call. Yeah, I'm thinking autism especially. Sometimes you, you need to be there in the room with them. But I was also thinking about what Carolyn had mentioned before in terms of those shorter meetings. Um, but questions, so Sharita mentioned something that I know I hadn't thought of because I've never really been in that kind of a rural area. But what do you do when the internet just doesn't work? I think so, Chino, huh? What did you say, Gina? I, well, I, I have something to say, and I'm going to have to disconnect soon. And I'm so, so, so sorry because I don't okay. have my camera on. Um, but um, I would say adv advocate for the family voice. Um, speak on what it is that you see that are the barriers to service. Um, whether it's uh, not being tech savvy, whether it's not having the internet um, um, bandwidth, whether it is, hey, this just this person just will probably attend well. You have to, you have to, when you see something, you have to say something, and you have to bring those things to, um, you know, even you know, to to leadership that that's what's in the agency. Okay, what can we do to mitigate this? Uh, problem. What can we do to, to to try to be able to serve all of our, our clients? Can can we? Is it somewhere in particular that we can meet in the office? Is what can we do? Well, we got to start asking those questions instead of saying, "Oh, well, we can't do anything." Because honestly, I mean, and I'm just being really transparent here. Okay, the more and more that we lose, we lose people due to not being able to connect with them. The more and more we lose funds. And That's that is true. the big thing. You know, nobody wants to talk about that. And I understand that some of us, we work for nonprofits and all of that, and we are helpers, and we, oh, and I'm doing this out the kindness of my heart. This is absolutely true. However, the bill's got to be paid. So we got to talk about the logistics. We can talk about the logistics of the service provision at the same time talking about the service provision itself. We That's real. About it. That, that's real. And, you know, we got COVID going on and sometimes we can't get in contact or we're not making that extra effort to get in contact because of fears and different kinds of things. But you're right. The bottom line is the that if we line. don't provide the service, <laughs> mm 
Mm-hmm. And our funding does get cut off. So mm-hmm. we've got to figure out alternatives. Carolyn, I know I see your hand now. I don't think I don't think you you didn't. Um, yes, yes, lower. I meant to raise. Yes, thank you. I meant to raise my hand that time, but Danielle just said something um, that um, I, I want to speak more about about family voice. And one way that we are successfully using um, you know, the the MS teams when we or Zoom when our agency is meeting with families, um, you know, and on behalf of families. Uh, for school meetings, for, you know, attorney meetings, for, you know, all kinds of different meetings to help this family um, learn how to use their own voices, because, you know, that's what we, you know, we all want, instead of doing for them, we want to help them learn how to do it themselves, is um, if we are on um, a virtual meeting uh, with a family and with other people, um, we're all on our cell phones, um, texting the family, say this, ask that, remember to, you know, to help prompt that family um, to ask all the questions that they want to ask. So it's been a really great help um, to the families to um, have their own voice where we're not doing it for them. You know, I might be prompting them and reminding them, but, you know, being a parent myself who's been in an IEP meeting for my own kid, it's like so much harder to remember everything I want to say. And um, it's, this is a really great under the table way to, com- you know, yeah. to communicate with families. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. I've used that because I, I do some work with, we have a, uh, in North Carolina, we have a North Carolina Child Welfare Family Advisory Council. And I do that kind of work with them. Um, admittedly, Sometimes some of my people have to use Zoom, but the thing that I have discovered that I didn't know initially was that whoever has the Zoom account, they can see the chat. Maybe not right then, um, but after the fact, they can download the chat and see the chat. And so that's the issue with confidentiality. But if you're using your telephone, then they're not going to see that. And, and that's exactly why we do it. Mm-hmm. What, what I was speaking on, because I was going to put this in the chat, um, is when I meant like at, um, advancing the family voice, I meant in meetings that they have no part in. In meetings that they are not aware of that happens. I'm talking about at uh, the executive level. You know, when you, we, we are having our team meetings um, within the, our agency, and our parents aren't a part of that. So we got to be able to, when we see something, say something to be able to address those barriers. Of course, especially in my role as a parent support partner, I'm going to push them to use their own voice. But I'm talking about in meetings that they have no place in. They don't even know that they are happening. We have to advocate for them too, as well as service providers. That, that's why this one job is uh, the people learn you said the voice, the people empowering, because sometimes uh, the people depend on you. Only, oh, you can do this one for me, or oh, you can call this one. No, you have to learn and, and help you, you know, exploration, you know, how you can call, whatever you need call, they're for housing, they're for IP, a school, the program, the meeting, and help the family learn. I know the teacher, but this one is my job. Yeah, Sometimes can... it, it's very hard because when we come in the, the Puerto Rico, here I don't have a help. Only in on one side, the, the, the people rich. And the only, you know, poor, because my husband have a good job. So nobody can help me say, okay, Mrs. Melendez, I can help you. I can look in people for you. It's Spanish, I don't have a nothing there. So that's why this one job for me is very important, right? That's good, that's good. There's, there's a comment that's in the chat and I want the person that wrote it to, to talk about this because um, she's talking about numerous grants. So go ahead, you know who I'm talking to. Okay. Unmute. Uh, it is is very hard. So I think no, so. Uh, Miss Melendez, I, I want her to mention this thing about these grants because I think that that could be key to a lot of people here. 
I, I want y'all to hear about this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, so we have obtained several, not several, but new, quite a few different grants that specialize in providing internet services, telephones, tablets, anything to connect people in low income or rural areas to doctors, mental health services, um, providers, and um, it has helped a lot of people. There's actually one um, counseling service in Oklahoma that has provided iPads for their uh, clients during the um, pandemic. And they like uploaded, um, they had their own software, of course, and they uploaded games per their client deal. And they were able to talk to their client anytime and their ratings have like gone off the roof. Like they're, all of their clients have been positive reinforcement. Like it is amazing to see the data behind it, but so also who, the data who are the behind funders? it. Who are the funders? I cannot remember. Um, you can, so just, you can go to, into if, Google if, and type grants for Wi-Fi, phones, internet services, and it'll pop up tons of them. Okay, question. Um, I'm thinking about what Sharita has said because that, that has definitely stuck in my mind in terms of the rural areas. So um, those hotspots don't work there either? So I, live, I live in a town of a thousand. I live in a rural area where it's, you know, like it takes you, we have different towns and they take you 10, 15 minutes to get to this town. Like I live like six miles from, from our town, but I had to have some kind of internet service to come in here, you know, from my home. But I think about the people that's out, that's out in the deeper country area that in the tree area, they may not have like a satellite out there to even have an internet at all, whether they're, you know, cause I think about technology, Expanding not only just for um, for services, but eventually we're going to be paying our bills online, <laughs> and people are going to have to have access to internet because elderly population of people may not be able to get out. How are they going to pay their bills? Like I think about all being able to call a doctor. Uh, yeah, calling a doctor. Yeah, calling the ambulance. Uh, so um, someone, Yesema, yes, go ahead and tell what you put in the chat. Yesema, am I not pronouncing your name no, right, Miss no, Marshall? Right. Yes, you're right, Yesema, that was right. You know, um, for, um, I know Comcast and Spectrum um, both have some programs uh, that you can get free the internet for Wi-Fi. And, um, and that's for low-income families as well. And I'm pretty sure they're, they're still doing it right now. Comcast actually used to do it before the pandemic happened, before COVID happened. But I know Spectrum um, started doing it once COVID happened. And I think it's currently going on right now. Um, I'm pretty sure I can look on my phone and find the link for it. But um, they're, they're doing that. And also sometimes with the hotspot, the hotspot can work. However, with some phone services, it's, um, it's going to be an extra, it may be an additional charge on their phone service in order to activate their hotspot. Mm -hmm. Especially if they have like um, Metro or, or Boost or, or any of those kind of subsidiary um, um, phone services, they're going to um, charge them a little extra money, maybe like five or 10 more dollars a month onto their service bill in order to activate that hotspot. So it doesn't automatically work, you know, with it. And so that's the, the, the tricky thing about it. And those who have Spectrum too, which people may not know about, and when you have Spectrum um, with their internet service, if you're out in town or you're somewhere, you may be able to connect to a Spectrum hotspot, but you have to set up your Spectrum account and all that kind of good stuff. And someone may have to walk you through that if you're not really savvy with technology. You yeah, have to, because yeah. you can tap in, into that, you know, with it. But, um, and with the phones, sometimes they need to understand too that even with their phones, most phone services, it, it's cheaper now and it's very, very popular to have unlimited 
when you have unlimited with your phone service, you'll be able to tap into Zoom and your your Microsoft Teams and all that kind of stuff. With right. on the internet, you know, maybe difficult when you're out in the woods and in kind of the city. In, I'm in Orlando, Florida, in Kissimmee, and we had to get like three different new towers within maybe a two or three mile radius. Because even our the best of the phone services, AT and T, you know, uh, uh, T Mobile, our phone services are and our satellites and were, were horrible. So yeah. you know, it's just kind of going on right now. But I'm gonna find the link for those free song, uh, that free internet. And so what I would like tools. for you all to do, mm -hmm. those of you that have those kind of resources, so there's a question and answer part um, on the Wova site for for um, this session, if you would put that information in that area so that everybody would know where to find it. Because when this is over, the chat is gonna go down, but that will still be up. So Yashema, and see, I keep messing up your name. Um, I wanna call you Rihanna and that is not your name. <laughs> no, no problem, it's you know, fine. If we have that, if we have that area, then we can, put some information there. Now, I think Nevada came on because she's going to tell us something. Nevada, go ahead and tell us whatever it is that you're going to tell us because that's why you came on. You, you're Lexi and Nevada. You don't know who you are because sometimes you're Lexi and sometimes you're Nevada. <laughs> go ahead and tell us. You're going to tell us something. Go on. You're on mute, so we can't tell what you're saying now. Oh, no, you didn't hear any of that. <laughs> no, no, no. I was uh, logging back in, so I had to rename myself. Okay, because I was thinking you might have been having some, some identity issues because you were definitely moving back and forth. Magdalena, you came on camera. You get married. Tell us something. All right. I actually was going to support Lexi um, and wanted her. I She's the youth move facilitator uh, for Nevada Pep and... Yeah, they yeah. have um they have game night, uh, um, so it's really cool to do this virtual uh, meeting with you. And so I don't know if she wants to share a little bit about it, Lexi. That that would be great because remember we had been told earlier that sometimes some of the young people are not engaging um, with this this. But I'm thinking if you're playing some games, they are going to pay yeah. some attention. Yeah, Tell us about that. thinking about that when uh, Rhiannon, hopefully I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry if I'm not. Um, when she was talking about like the spa days and stuff over Zoom, because we started our game night simply to create a safe space where youth can have that social connection and then just have fun with each other virtually and play games. Um, it has been very interesting. Our participation has been decreasing. Um, so I just wanted to be, you know, transparent and, and throw that out there. And I do think it's because we're seeing a lot of like Zoom burnout from youth. Youth were getting very tired of being on Zoom, being um, connecting with their teachers and friends and even doctors virtually. Um, so I think that that burn burnout is something that's affecting youth. But on the other hand, well, I, I got to play devil's advocate. I, I just got to ask this question. Yeah. So now I know that some of the times young people can be sitting next to each other and texting. What's the difference? That's a good question. <laughs> because if they're, they're, they're looking at the little things and, and, and texting and the human being is sitting right here. So yeah, I, I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> okay, I, I just had to put it out there because it came in my mind. I was like, yeah, I mean, okay. it's a really good question. And if I could just say one more thing, I think we were really able to pivot in when the, the pandemic hit because of what the virtual platforms allowed us to do. And at first, youth were taking a lot of interest in it, and it was working really well, and it is still working very well. Um, but it, it really has given us this different ability to connect. But as well as mentioned in, you know, previous details, it's it's different for youth, especially, you know, neurodivergent youth or youth that are on the spectrum. Um, it's yeah. challenging to, to get that engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we do need our young people to be socially engaged with one another. We do. That's that's a real need. Okay, now, I, 
I'm still calling her Rihanna and I still know that that's not her name, but she's not correcting me. And she wrote something in the chat and she knows she needs to go ahead and tell us. I recommend socially distant get together or events. They've done them on my college before, uh, you know, the COVID vaccine, you know, everybody could get their COVID vaccine. And it was really positive for the youth. Um, so what would happen was everything, all the food was pre-made and in little bags or boxes, whatever. Um, and then everybody wore a mask. If you were vaccinated, you didn't have to, but you all stayed. And it was just a way for us to bond and get to know each other. And I mean, like they they have, uh, I seen one on TikTok, I think actually. And, um, it was a college group and they laid out blankets on the, uh, yard and they had a beach ball and they would like pass it off. And it was just a fun game so they could see each other while being safe. Sounds good to me, but I, I'm I'm of a certain age. Uh, other people, <laughs> Jacqueline, you are down there in at the bottom of my screen with a bright smile on your picture. So, what do you think about all of this, Jacqueline Taylor? Um, I think it's been really good info to gather to help out with families as well, because um, that's been kind of our issue is how to to get out to families to help them when they don't have internet or having Zoom problems or other sites. So it's been really good info to acquire and it'll definitely help out. And so this, what I'm hearing consistently is that, yeah, we're going to digital. However, everybody, it sounds like a lot of people don't have access and we've got to figure out how to get beyond that. So Stephanie and Sunny, y'all have been quiet all throughout the meeting. What are you thinking? Stephanie and, and Sonny? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what are you thinking? <laughs> y'all well, well, at the bottom of my screen, just your names, not saying nothing. Yeah, come on, contribute. Well, I've been listening um, and thinking about all of the changes and how technologically advanced we've become. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that, you know, while they are making changes, and we're moving into um, even more of an information age, there are gonna have to be considerations made for people who are not tech savvy and who will not even consider um, the tech age. You have people who still don't have email addresses. And we think about individuals who are uh, some baby boomers and the generation prior to, they're not even trying to learn anything new, pretty much. So um, right. I think there's some, there's some consideration there. There are some changes being made, but I don't think we'll see a lot of things completely fall off simply because we have those individuals who are not going to consider um, uh, different types of technology. And I heard the other young lady who was talking about, uh, I think that was Sharita, being in rural areas where there is no internet connection. I live in Jackson. And I go to school in Henderson, and I know in uh, Chester, in parts of Chester County and Henderson, um, after you get so far into those communities, they don't have internet access, so they have to come into the city, you know, go to restaurants or things like that, so that their kids can do homework. Uh, some places in Gibson County, you know, those more rural areas, they do not have that accessibility because those communities just are not equipped. Um, with those different towers and things of that nature. So, I have a quick question um, mm -hmm. before I ask Christine, Christy, Gabriel, and Teresa to comment. So if you, just looking at the communities in which you live in, mm -hmm. how many of, what percentage, say, of your, look at your state, um, what percentage do you think are without the ability to access the, um, the these digital communications. If you were to just look at your state, so um, Stephanie, yo, Stephanie came on because she 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 unmuted herself so she can tell us. <laughs> I've been listening. I've just been quiet. I know. So quiet. <laughs> we we we're getting you to talk now. 
Um, I say I stay in the inner city. I stay in a pretty big area. Um, and so it'll it'll be different reasons that people wouldn't have accessibility, either because of the lack of affordability and also for being in areas where it's just not accessible, where it's not available to them. Um, and if, if I were to think about numbers, I would probably say about a good 20 to 30% of the That's community. a nice chunk of people. It is. And um, and that would be uh, combined, I would say, as far as, you know, both scenarios. If it's just that they can't afford it, the additional expense, or because they're in an area where it's just not made available to them. Wow. And Christine is chiming in saying yes. And Yoshima is um, also saying that pre-pandemic that a lot of people didn't even have computers or internet. Right. The schools had to provide those devices for the children who um, once, you know, things happened as far as COVID, the, the schools had to step up and provide those devices for families as well as <laughs> providing them with the ability to even obtain those yeah. services yeah, for internet. Um, so they had a, a plan with one of our local providers to make sure that families could have those services. Wow, so those are things, and I agree with, um, Danielle had to leave, but I, I agree with her. Um, so Ms. Melendez, you can definitely take that back um, to her that, you know, she made a very good point that administrators need to be aware of this and that you all should be um, tabulating your concerns and, 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 and sharing that with them because all of this, what, for what, from what they're telling us, COVID is, don't, don't y'all beat me up, but COVID may be the beginning, um, especially if we got climate change, we don't know what other kind of diseases and stuff are going to be popping up and, and impacting our systems. And so I guess this is um, an opportunity for us to prepare. Thank you. 